Hello, everyone. Dr. Victoria Skirbo here, speaking to you from Friday Harbor, Washington, on the road with the Siege of Transformation. And uh, we're going to look at uh, the next about 10 days. We're going to go from um, today, which is the 11th, until the 23rd. So I have 12 days, I guess. Um, take a look at the astrology. Um, now, I'm doing this in a different place, so this is going to look a little different than my usual ones. I'm not gonna have um, the PowerPoint, but I am gonna be able to share charts with you. Um, so let's, I just wanna say some general stuff about um, this week coming up. We have been through a lot of um, frustration when it has come to um, things getting done, um, people being held accountable. Um, it just seems like things that should matter don't seem to matter anymore. Um, and so we can get tricked to think that that's the new, that's the new thing, right? Uh, do whatever you want and you're not gonna get in trouble, right? Um, however, uh, that is simply an illusion. And, um, there are laws of man and there are laws of nature. And what goes around comes around. And that is a law of nature. And we're going to start seeing that this week. In, um, as they say, the expression in spades, which I don't actually know where that expression came from. You probably do, and you probably will tell me. But um, so I'm sitting here, <coughs> excuse me, in my friend's kitchen. Uh, I have a little fire behind me. You can't really see it. It's kind of low now, um, but what a lovely way to start the morning. Um, of course, it's not morning anymore, but my morning is going very slowly because <laughs> I'm on vacation. Uh, so I'm sitting here with a giant cup of that coffee you can only get in Washington, you know, stuff that'll keep you up for a week. And I have a vat of it and it's delicious. And I'm sitting here with the fire behind me and the ocean in front of me, so. And I hope you've enjoyed some of our little trips with our videos. You'll get more of those, um, but I want to, um, you know, I have to, I have to figure out the technology, quite frankly. Okay, so um, let's get started. All right. Now we're starting with. Um, let's see. I have everything written down here. Of course, now I'm all confused. All right. Just give me a moment, guys, and I apologize for being. Uh, you know, so where's Monday here? Don't laugh. I have it. I have it written on a uh, on a napkin. Okay, I think this is what we're looking at here. Hold on one second. So today is the eleventh. Goodness gracious, where's my eleven here? Just give me a moment, guys. I gotta get my bearings. Okay, <laughs> I got my bearings. <coughs> Excuse me. So today is Monday the 11th. Um, we do have a shift of the moon from Sag to Capricorn. Um, I talked about this in my daily this morning, if you check that out. Uh, other than that, there's nothing really going on per se today uh, of great consequence, but there are a lot of things in, in process of going on. So while there may not be anything specifically happening today, we can feel this great intensity. Now I have made somewhat of a promise to myself not to get too invested in what I'm seeing, um, what's being shown on television with uh, the different uh, networks, because um, I find that they are really mostly um, sort of bringing in the fear stuff and I'm not interested in the fear stuff. Um, I would rather just sort of go purely by what I see in, in the stars and then see how that manifests itself. So I may say things that are already happened or haven't happened yet, or might not seem likely to happen, um, but I'm just gonna go with the energy of the stars. Um, so this shift into the moon into Capricorn sort of puts us in, in a more serious mind. And that actually, that shift occurs at 
1.15 p.m. on the East Coast of the U.S. Uh, so that's already happened uh, as I do this. On Tuesday, we have the moon in Capricorn again. It's another one of those sort of roll, your, roll up your sleeve days. But we also have on Tuesday an in conjunct between Mercury and Uranus. So let's take a look at that chart quickly here. Okay. All right. So here we have the chart for... Um, oh, oh, this is today's chart. Okay. Nothing happened in today. All right, Saturn. Um, oh, I don't have the in conjunct here. Well, okay. So there's an in conjunct between um, Uranus and, and Mercury. Mercury is lower. Uh, Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury. So they're both mentally stimulating. And so we will feel mentally stimulated on, um, on Tuesday the 12th. However, uh, things may not make sense completely to us. In conjuncts deal with two planets that are in uh, signs um, that have no real connection. There's, there's a, um, they're dissimilar. They're dissimilar in, um, in nature. So the in conjuncts, if you have in conjuncts in your chart, you'll often sort of feel out of sync with the rest of the world to a certain extent. And so we can feel sort of mentally out of sync. So we may be seeing things, you know, in front of us, or if we watch TV and we're watching the news or something, and it doesn't quite make sense to the information coming in for us, or it could just be our own lives that we have that, we have that issue. So on the 13th, which is Wednesday, um, we have the moon in, uh, continues to move through uh, Capricorn and then shifts into Aquarius. Now, on that day, we have a sextile between Saturn and Venus. This sextile is a waning sextile. Sextiles can either have the energy of uh, Gemini, which makes them curious and sort of looking into uh, information, how to get information, you know, expanding yourself through the gathering of information. And the other sextile is um, an Aquarius sextile, Aquarius side sextile, it's a waning sextile, which is what this one is. And so what we're doing is we are, we already have all the information and we've already processed much of that information and we're offering it, we're offering our knowledge and our wisdom in this sextile. And when we're dealing with Venus and Saturn, we're dealing with what is important to us, our values, right? Now, Venus, um, this relationship be between Venus and Saturn started at the Venus-Saturn conjunction, which occurred at the beginning of the year. Um, unfortunately, I did not, did not write down um, what degree that occurred in. Um, if I had my other computer, I would have all that information. I don't have that information in this computer, so I apologize. But we have come to a point where the time for progressive change is here and it's an opportunity for progressive change. And what does progressive change mean? Well, it means that we're humanitarian, it's Aquarius, right? So this energy of Aquarius and of course, Saturn, right? And here's where Saturn, here's Saturn is in Aquarius. Saturn in Aquarius is asking us to create structures for the benefit of all people, Aquarius, right? So um, this Venus sextile um, Saturn is sort of informing us of what is important to us. And Venus is in Sagittarius. So there's a certain amount of um, freedom would be very important to us. Um, not, you know, pretty much not being held in, pent in. And so we can see this also uh, as sort of more of a revolutionary energy with, um, with, with, um, Venus in, in Sag, and Venus just came off the south node of the moon. Um, so we have had to sort of go back to our relationships. Now, of course, Venus is relationship archetype as well. And so we can be, um, what have we learned through our experience uh, from the beginning of the year when Saturn and Venus came together? Now we're all the way 300 degrees past that point. What have we learned about our relationships? Um, do our relationships, this could be a question we ask ourselves, 
do our relationships allow us to be who we are, who we, who we uniquely are or who we are authentically? It's really about authenticity, uh, which is one of the reasons why so many people get upset with politics because people generally are not authentic, although there's a whole new group of politicians who are coming in that are quite authentic and uh, they're causing quite a stir. So, and, and perhaps on both sides, I don't know. Uh, I only can think of the ones uh, that sort of lean to the left on my side, to the left, uh, but there may be some um, uh, people on the right that are also uh, being authentically who they are, not the, um, not the Getzes and the, and the Bobarts and the Greens, not those people, but other Republicans. I just don't know them, so that's why. I, I've assumed they're there too. Okay, so that is the 13th. Now, the next day, I have like all things open here. The next day, um, let's see, is that all I want to, oh no, so there's one other thing happening on, Wednesday, and that is this in conjunct between the sun and Neptune. Here we have the sun down here. See where uh, Mars is very close to the sun. Um, and we have an in conjunct to Neptune right here. Again, we're dealing with two signs that they're not, uh, we have the sun in a cardinal uh, air sign, and we have Neptune in a mutable water sign. Water and air do not mix mutability and cardinality are different, right? So there's the there's difference between them. And when we're dealing with Neptune and Mercury, um, Neptune and the sun, the sun is an energy of delineation and Neptune is the energy of diffusion and confusion and illusion and delusion, but also idealism. So there's this sense of not really being able to see where we're going, not really, being able to see where we're going. We have an idea of where we want to go and we don't, we, it's really hard uh, to get there. And what's going to happen is a little bit later, we're going to talk about Mars coming up to that in conjunct. And so we're looking, you know, the sun is our ability to see things, right? Because the sun illuminates. Well, we're trying to illuminate the fog. And then in a few days, Mars comes up and tries to take an action, but it's, also in that in conjunct to Neptune. So there's a real like, we kind of know where we have to go. We just can't imagine how we're gonna get there or we can't, or we actually, we can imagine perhaps as we, we get there, but we may not be able to see. And so you have to be kind of, there's a certain amount of like having to hold back with this energy because you're not really sure where you're gonna go. I mean, you could create a whole direction to go in, but because you're missing the mark with the inconjunct, you could find yourself someplace where you don't want to be. So there is a need to a certain extent to sort of sit back a little bit, make adjustments as necessary. Inconjuncts always require us to make adjustments. And these adjustments are adjustments that we have to make because things from the outside of us, as opposed to what's inside of us coming up and saying, well, that's not quite right. That's not quite right. It's not that type of in conjunction, in conjunct. This in conjunct comes from the outside. So you're going to feel like you're perhaps getting attacked by this. And so instead of reacting to the attack, because you don't really even know where the person is so that's attacking you because you're in a fog, um, sort of step back and wait for your moment, because there will be moments to come when things will be much clearer and we'll, we will be able to move in a, in a clearer direction. It's just not quite now, okay? So we have that going on. So that's the 13. I wish my phone would stop doing what it's doing, but okay. So the next thing we're gonna look at is um, the 15. So on the 15, we have the sun making a trine to uh, Jupiter. Now Jupiter is in Aquarius, and uh, here is the sun. Where is the sun? Ah, sun in the twelfth house. This is for uh, Washington D.C. So this is this is more for like America, but you can also apply it to wherever you happen to live, and you can apply it to your own chart. So here we have the sun, and it's making a trine to Jupiter. It also makes a trine to um, the moon that day. So 
We have the moon conjunct Jupiter, trying the sun. This is very emotional. In the United States, this is happening in the, in the water signs, uh, in the water housing. So this is very emotional. So our feelings, our emotions are very, very like large at this time, okay? Um, Jupiter is retrograde, but in a few days, it's gonna turn and go direct. And it's going to make a trine to Mars at that time. So again, there's this, and you know what it feels like to me, quite frankly, it feels like things are going to happen, whether we want them to or not. And what we have to do is we have to focus on where we sort of fit into this and how we can be our most integrated whole person and it's it, it's a it's this it's this energy of the the whole like the group the whole humanity moving forward and you can't be concerned with other people with that you can't be concerned <clears throat> with what other people are doing because you'll just have enough vision i believe to focus on what it is that you're doing and so ultimately we're the only people, I am the only person who has control over me to a certain extent. And that control just really depends on how I react and respond to what's happening around me. There are times in life and there are times in the history of humanity where we get taken along. It's a collective evolution and that's what we are in the middle of. And so when I started this and I said, well, you know, it feels like nothing was happening or nobody was being held responsible. It's like, we're not in charge here, guys. We're along for the ride. And what we can do is we can steer our own boat to the best of our ability being uniquely who we are. And that is going to get us to the other side of this. If we extend ourselves in different directions, right? Um, trying to force people to see your point of view or trying to, you know, we can't force anything this time. The, the changes are just too big for us to do that. Okay. So this Jupiter, um, one of the problems with Jupiter, um, Jupiter sun, uh, connection, they're both, you know, expansive planets, right? They're the two largest things in the solar system is that we can get it. We can have a tendency towards e uh, arrogance. If that's your tendency or over optimism, oh, everything's gonna be fine, you know, everything's great, you know. Um, maybe, maybe not. We'll find out, right? We'll find out. Okay, so that's going, that's happening on the 15th. Now, then let's see what I have up here next. We also have <clears throat> on that day Venus making a semi a waning semi square to Pluto. Now, I mentioned this, um because the semi-square to Pluto, semi-squares are, um, in this case, it's a waning semi-square. We're moving from the last quarter phase uh, of the phases, um, the lunation phases. Last quarter phase is the revolutionary phase. It's turning away, it's reorienting. It's, you know, it's sort of like uh, not trusting authority. When we get to the semi-square, we move into the balsamic phase. And so between now and the next conjunction of Venus and Pluto, um, which I believe is happening, I don't know, it's either happening December or January. Um, this is about letting go. And Pluto and Venus are, uh, Interesting bedfellows because, of course, it has to do with relationship and Pluto being soul deep. So these are your soulmates that we're dealing with here. Um, and this is a time of letting go. Um, you have no control anymore. You just have to sort of let go and let, let go and let God goddess, as I like to say, uh, within your relationships. And it's a time to extract meaning. It's a time to extract meaning. So whatever your relationships have been, especially your relationships to power, perhaps your relationships to money, um, your, you know, if you have any relationships where there's control, people trying to control other people, either through overt control or um, covert and manipulation. Uh, this is a time of get, garnering meaning from that experience. 
And so it is a time of contemplation. It's a time of looking at things in a different perspective. It's a time of letting go. And then it's a time of nurturing the seeds that you want to put forth in the next cycle, in the next cycle. So that's happening um, on this day as well. So that is the 15th. So there's a lot happening, just like one thing after another. So on the 16th, have to figure out how to not let it like well anyway it doesn't matter um so on the 16th which is a saturday we have the moon in pisces moon in pisces and we have um mars in conjunct neptune remember i spoke of that so this is a challenging time this is a day you could get lost easily lost because mars is about forward motion right and neptune is about fog so you could even if you're traveling there could be issues with fog um, I'm actually traveling that day back to Massachusetts. So I'll let you know how I do on that. I was like, oh, that's the day I picked to go back. Ooh. Actually, it was picked for me because my friend got my ticket for me. But it's okay. I'll be fine. I have a Pisces moon. Pisces moon and Mars, Mars in conjunct Neptune. Um, don't expect to know where you're going. Have faith that you'll get there. I think that's what I want to say about that day. Okay, let's see what's coming up next year. All right, we also have um, the sun making a last quarter square to Pluto on the 17th. And here we have the sun and here we have Pluto. Now I wanna show you something here. Here's the sun and Pluto. And if we look over here, we have Eris. Now remember Eris and Pluto just made the last of five exact last quarter squares um, and it went from 20, the first of them, I think the first two or the first three, I don't know if there were three in 2020 and two in 2021 20, or the other way around, but it's the last of five. And these planets move so slowly. The initial conjunction was like in 1758, I think. So, uh, and we just discovered Eris in 2006. It was just named, named, a, named a, a dwarf planet. So we haven't really had a lot of experience with Eris quite yet, um, but these last quarter squares are crisis and consciousness squares. And Eris is a revolutionary feminine energy that does not like to be left out. Uh, it, it's, it's very much, um, it can be very irritating. It's a very sort of irritating. Uh, Eris was the goddess who would go uh, onto the battlefield with her brother Ares, the god of war. And if there was an injured soldier, she'd poke at their, their wounds, like pouring salt on their wounds. And uh, to me, it feels like, you, was this really worth it, boys? Right, that's what it felt like. That's what it feels like to me. Um, and she brings a lot of discord, but the, she brings discord into situations that are not fair, it, whether it's not fair because um, she wasn't invited because she wasn't of the right ilk to a wedding or fair because uh, you're considered less than, she will have none of that. She will have none of that. And she's very active at this time and part of the big shift that's happening right now. So we have some really powerful feminine energy asserting itself. And we can see it in politics. We can see it with Nancy Pelosi, whether you like her or not, agree with her or not, the woman is a force of nature. We can see it with people like AOC and Ilhan Omar and Ilhan Presley and Rashida Tlaib and now Cori Bush. I mean, it's just getting bigger and better in my estimation. Um, so I'll just say bigger. Maybe I won't put my own ex expectations into this. But, um, you know, like enough is enough. We've gone down this road long enough and it's only gotten us pain and suffering and we're on the brink of destruction. Now let's get it right. Or let's do it different. I don't know about getting it right, but let's do it different. Okay. So um, the sun, the sun last quarter squared of Pluto is that crisis in consciousness. So this is revolutionary. This is not trusting authority, really. Um, and of course, Pluto and Capricorn is the oligarchs. So we're not too thrilled with them. We're like, 
Do you think you're going to get away with it just because you have all that money? Well, you're mistaken, folks. That's the energy. We'll see what happens. That's how I read it anyway. It could just be my own um, want of that, right? Okay. So we will, um, so let's just, uh, let's just, so that was the 16, right? Uh, Mars in conjunct um, Neptune. So, so confusion around direction that we're going. Again, don't completely commit yourself to a direction because uh, you're not gonna see where you're gonna end up. You really have to have a better view of, um, uh, you know what it feels like? Let me, this is what it feels like to me. And I'm just gonna um, stop the share for a second. It feels to me like there's a lot of changing and shifting going on. And before you commit to the direction you wanna take, uh, step back and wait and see what the universe is. Um, see what the what the, the 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 wave of evolution is bringing forth right we just went through the 1010 portal i was going to do a reading on that but i was uh, out and about so i did it uh, on my vacation um and on that day right 1010 saturn moved direct saturn and aquarius um and so on the south node of the united states by the way um so this is uh, we are moving away from the past into the future, but we had to review the past. We had to see where we made mistakes. We had to see what our past really looked like um, instead of whitewashing and then, you know, not saying, you know, not including slavery or, or critical race theory or all the other stuff that comes up like, oh, we gotta have that. Everybody's gonna think that the United States are a bunch of assholes. Well, we were kind of, in certain cases, we weren't. I mean, we have done some pretty amazing things as a country, considering how young we are. Um, but we, you know, we've also gone by the way of empire, uh, which is not a new way. It's the old way, right? We came from Europe to get away from empire, and we became an empire, right? What you try to what you try to destroy, you create. So instead of trying to destroy anything, let's just create what we want because so we get it, what well, we get what we need and want and what's gonna, there's a, within my own self, if, if you don't mind me just saying this to you guys, within my own self, I really feel like there's a point where I stopped trying to impress my will upon the world and I stepped back and I allowed spirit to flow through me and I became a channel of spirit in a way and I it has opened me up to self-love it has opened me up to a, a sense of deservability um, and sometimes just saying thank you like oh well that was unexpectedly pleasant thank you or, oh, you know, so like being full of gratitude, even if things aren't great, even if you're like, well, I'd like that to be a little bit better than this. Be grateful for where you're at, guys. It's gonna get us through and it's gonna get us fulfilled and true to ourselves. Isn't that the most important thing? Be true to yourself. And yourself is not the little S self, it's the big S self, the higher self. It's the spiritual side of you. What have you come to do? What have you come to experience? What have you come to learn? You are spirit and you have a job to do. What is that job? Okay, back to sharing my screen. Thank you for letting me do that. Back to the screen, back to the screen share. So on the 18th, which is a Tuesday, I believe. Um, I have it written here. Is it a Monday? Oh gosh, it's a Monday. Don't, don't pay attention to days with me, okay? So on Monday, the moon uh, shifts from, from a Monday, the, um, the 18th, the moon shifts from 
uh, Pisces to Aries. Whenever that happens, we always like feel like, oh, we got to get started on something. My Aries moon, let's go. Well, sometimes we're in the Aries moon and everything's like, nope, stop, can't go. Everything's backwards, can't go. Something's in the way. Well, we have Jupiter moving direct on that day. And here we have it right here. Uh, where is it? Jupiter. Jupiter, there's Jupiter stationing direct. Um, she is trining, uh, or actually he, he is trining the sun, trining Mars. Um, let's see, he's doing anything over here. Um, yeah, so Jupiter stations direct at a uh, 1.09 a.m. on the 18th. And then on the same day, Mercury. Woo, everybody's like, Mercury is direct. Mercury stations direct. Now, this is very significant because Mercury is the ruler of the north node of the moon. See the north node of the moon being in Gemini. Jupiter is the, is this, is the um, south node of the moon. And so the, these, the, the south node and the north node have been in, in, um, in Gemini and Sag for a long time now. And it's coming to an end. It's actually going to move into the next set of signs in January. So this is the end of this cycle. It starts at 30 degrees and goes to one or zero degrees. So it moves backwards. The nodes move backwards. And so it's been about 15 months they're usually in a sign for about 18 months. It's been a, maybe a little over 15 months of this. Uh, the information um, that we need to move forward, uh, Gemini, North Node, and the beliefs that we need to let go of so that we can evolve uh, South Node in uh, Sagittarius. And we have the rulers of both nodes moving direct on the same day. And then, um, we have on that same day as well, um, Mars making a trine to Jupiter. Mars, remember, was part of that new moon. Um, so there was a lot of energy in that new moon with Mars and the moon conjunct, in conjunct Uranus. Remember that? Uh, <laughs> that was not too long ago, a couple of this week, week before, was it? Um, and now we have Mars, the engine. Moving direct, all jazzed up from its new moon thing that it did, um, making this trine to Jupiter. This feels to me, Mars in Libra, Jupiter in Aquarius, seems like to me, we're going to see a shift in the law. We're going to see a shift in um, seeing people having to deal with the consequences of their actions. That's what it feels like to me. But it's also, we have the energy to move forward in a fair, equitable, humanitarian direction. So that's what I see. That's the potential of this, of this time. So this is a big day, Monday the 18th. On the 19th, we have Venus making an inconjunct to, um, to Uranus, the moon, of course, still in Aries on that day. And um, here's Venus here. Here's Uranus. Interestingly enough, um, Uranus is in a Venus ruled sign, right? So this is, of course, in conjunct, missing the mark. Uranus. Taurus, Venus in um, okay. Okay. Um, Uranus and Taurus, Venus in Sag. If there are any relationships that have been holding you back, this is a time when those things can, uh, if not break up, uh, certainly come to there'd be some sort of adjustment that needs to be made at this time. So be aware of that within your relationships. Um, and Venus being in Sag wants her freedom and Uranus in Taurus 
um, can create that actually. <laughs> so even if Taurus doesn't like it, they don't matter. Uranus is in Taurus. And whenever Uranus is in Taurus, it's like everything gets thrown up in the sky and when it comes down, there's a whole new system. That last time Uranus was in Taurus was in the 30s. So um, a lot of stuff changed. The world changed at that time. So it's happening again, 84 years later. Okay. So let's see what I have. What else I have here? On the 20th, we have a full moon in Aries. Now, this is a very powerful full moon. There's the sun. There's the moon. The moon is in a very close conjunction to Eris. Of course, Eris is in a very tight square to Pluto. Um, and Pluto is also continues to square um, the sun and it's squaring Mars. And this is going to be exact. Um, let's see, let me just see here. Oh, that exact is happening on uh, Friday. Friday, so two days from Wednesday the 20th, where we have the new moon. Um, on Thursday, the next day, we actually have Mars. I think I have it in here, hold on, is it? Yeah, so the next day, Thursday, we have Eris in an exact opposition to Mars, you see that? And very tight square to Pluto. This is what is shifting us. This is the evolutionary edge right here. This T square, this T square. Now this is worldwide. What's, what's specific to us in America is that of course, Saturn is, I mean, Pluto is in its Pluto return. Right? It's been in its Pluto return since like 2017. Uh, but of course it's most intense now because as soon as Pluto stationed direct, which was on that new moon in, in, on the 6th, I think it was the 6th of October, the new moon in, in, in Libra, it started to move towards its return, like exact return, which will be exact in February, June or July and December of next year. So 2022 is gonna be quite the experience, if I could say. All right, so let's go here. Hopefully you're following this. I know I'm saying a lot of things and hopefully this is understandable to you. Um, on the 22nd, um, which is a Friday, we have Mars square Pluto. There we go, Mars square Pluto. Mars opposite Eris. Sun is there. And we have the uh, Mars trining Jupiter. So we have this, this creates a lot of energy, a lot, a lot of energy. So there is a huge shift to moving to evolve, moving to evolve, okay. And then the last thing we're gonna look at on the last day, the 23rd of October, we have the sun moving into um, Scorpio. Now, What's interesting is Scorpio has two rulers. Um, it has Mars as a ruler and it has Pluto as a ruler of the sign. And we have Mars and Pluto in a last quarter crisis in consciousness square uh, as the sun moves into the plant, uh, into the sign of death and rebirth. And so it gets moving in October in earnest. November and December are going to be watershed times. And then in January, we move into our Pluto return. So um, a lot of intensity out there, a lot of intensity. And because of that, um, it's really important that you stay centered, that you stay in alignment with yourself, in alignment with your spirit. We have a lot, of, we're gonna be going through a lot of things and a lot of experiences and just, and maybe even things we never thought we would 
or I never thought could happen, or, oh my God, that happened so quick, but it were, wasn't really quick because it's been a process. It's a very interesting time to be alive. And you chose to be alive at this time, as did I. So let's do our best with that. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was kind of long. Um, like, subscribe if you have any comments. Um, I'm going to, I don't think I'll have the time to timestamp this. So, um, but if, if you don't want to sit through this whole thing, I will talk about this each day as well. And you won't just be seeing charts in my face. You'll actually be seeing pretty things outside. So. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's my pleasure to do it for you, even on my vacation. Because I love what I do. I do what I love, and I love what I do. And I don't work a day in my life, even though I'm constantly working. So it doesn't ever feel like that. Have yourself a great day. Have yourself a great, um, what is it, 12 days. We're going to get to the other side of this and we're going to be like, wow, that was awesome. Maybe. But we'll definitely say, wow. It'll be like this. Right? Like when you're, you know what it is? It's like we're doing that thing going up. And then we get to the top and we're like, and then you start and it's like, and you know you can't go back you couldn't go back even when you were taking up the hill right we're in for the ride of our lives or lifetimes perhaps so hold on tight to the ones you love keep yourself focused on what it is that you want to create in your life what is it because this time anytime we have upheaved times of great upheaval there's it's also a time when we when there's great creative energy for us to access. And if we keep distracting ourselves with what MSNBC or Fox News or any of these other people are saying, we're not gonna have the time and the energy to really do what we came here to do, to be who we are meant to be. What, it's like we're all different instruments in an orchestra and it's best to work on your own instrument and tune your own instrument and practice on your own instrument and sing your own song. And uh, it will be a great harmony. All right, guys, much love. Namaste.